This is the Riverhawk Report for Friday, April 9th, 2010. Baseball, the only game in town, UMass Lowell versus St. Insel. And sometimes games come down to just one inning or a couple of half innings. And such was the case on Thursday afternoon at Lalasher Park. The Riverhawks were winners, we'll tell you that right off. 4-3 was the final, but none of that tells you the story. Bottom of the second inning, the first of two key moments in the ballgame. Riverhawks trailed 2-0 at the time, but that all would change. Cam Nealon started the home half of the second he grounded out to third, but it was a 15-pitch at bat. It set the stage, probably rearranged the stage for the inning. He fouled off nine pitches, and he saw 15. Um, Even though he ended up grounding out, uh, that that set the tone for the inning. That's head coach Ken Herring. T.J. Leary then walked, and that brought up Jared Notagiacomo. 15 pitches to the first hitter, a walk to the second, and in this case, Notagiacomo got ahead on the count, and then launched Uh, one. Which was an absolute rocket, uh, and and he was sitting off speed and he really got into it. He uh, missed with a couple fastballs up and away, 2-0. He just laid me one, and um, I actually put a good swing on it. Same thing we've been working on for a while. Same thing as the other day. It just felt really good to get some solid wood on it and actually got out of the park, got some carry on it. Ahead on the count, Notre Giacomo looked for a pitch in a particular spot. Yeah, Coach does a good job of keeping us patient, but at the same time aggressive. Looking for one specific spot where we're trying to hit the ball when we're up in the count, and that was the spot I was looking for, so he got to attack it. And Notre Giacomo played hard ball with the left field scoreboard. The ball landed with a thud two-thirds of the way up the board. Yeah, I knew it was going this time. (laughs) It it felt good. It felt really good. At at that point, yeah, it would be nice to get over the scoreboard, but, you know, anything to get the team going and get everybody jacked up and get some runs on the board is a good thing. Not forgotten by Notre Giacomo was the 15-pitch at bat that Nealon had when the inning was just getting started. When he got back to the dugout, I actually went over to him and said, you started this inning. He knew that um, this was that was a huge at bat. I mean, to see all those pitches and to get everybody to just settle down and realize that this kid is hittable and to just stay back and be able to fight off that many pitches is just incredible. And he did a great job start, starting that inning. And this bottom of the second was far from over. Mark Sanborn beat out an infield single and one out later. Luke Wallace singled to drive in Sanborn. And then after Wallace stole second, Jordan Silva singled to bring him around. Two, two out RBI singles. Clutch hitting. Something that was missing earlier in the season. You know, we know how important these games are, and you can't give away at-bats. And I thought we did a pretty good job against that kid in that inning. I thought we put together better at-bats today. I didn't think we gave anything away. When the inning was over, the Riverhawks had a 4-2 lead. The visitors would get a run back in the top of the third inning, and then in the fourth, the Riverhawks went to the bullpen. Ted Haley took over and turned in a terrific performance. Five innings of three-hit shutout baseball. He had the mannerisms. He wanted the ball. He attacked the strike zone with his fastball, located for the first time all year, and had his breaking ball working. It wasn't that slow, loopy one, a little bit more sharp today, and uh, really mixed his pitch as well, and he really picked us up. It was the best I've had in a while. It's the best I've had in a while. Um, tried to just go out there and attack guys today and not, not hold anything back. I mean, had nothing to lose. It was nice to actually be able to throw, be able to throw that curveball again, like he was saying earlier. Haley referred to it there, his curveball. After struggling with the curve earlier in the season, it was nasty yesterday. I just tried to actually throw it today instead of aiming it over and thinking about it too much. You know, I tried to speed up the tempo a little bit in the windup. So um, it, I think that put a little extra behind it. But like you were saying, it was it was a little tighter than it's been. And uh, I got some guys to swing and miss on it. So it was it was effective today. Ted's been working real, real hard trying to get all of his pitches down and trying to get them all in for strikes and where he needs to locate them. And he was on fire today. He was unbelievable locating all of his pitches, especially that curveball. I mean, we called that, I think, four times in a row. I mean, we ended up getting a strikeout on it that last pitch to end the game was a curveball. It looked great today. It was biting real bad. It looked good. And there was one more moment of truth. Top of the eighth inning. Runners on second and third just one out. And Herring stuck with Haley. I thought it was his game to give him that opportunity and uh, to see I wanted to see what he was going to do in a tight situation and he showed me. He really made big pitches when he had to. And t- He was around the plate and had you know, good command of the, both of those pitches and you know, I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, it was a real good pick, pick, pick me up for before we had done in New York this weekend. And Haley and his cat Talk. We, we were talking about how we got a base open here. If he's going to hit a pitch, he's going to hit my pitch. So I'm going to make him do with it what I want. And obviously, that's get a ball on the ground. I'm not trying to blow it by anybody there, just trying to make him miss and hit my pitch. So we have a base open. So. Haley got the second out on a ground ball to short. The runners held where they were. And then Haley struck out the next batter. But the ball, a nasty curveball, skipped under Notre Giacomo and all the way back to the screen. Notre Giacomo, the catcher, scrambled after it and threw the man out at first. No, I, actually, to tell you the truth, I. I I thought I had it in my glove. I really did. And then I looked down and I was like, oh man, coach, please don't kill me. 
that <laughs> oh teddy don't kill me um so i just sprinted back and at that point i still didn't know the guy hadn't ran to first so i, I thought we tied the game and when i first was running back i didn't hear anything and then i can always hear coach herring in the back of my head saying whatever it is and he was screaming one so i knew right when i turned i mean i slid into it and i was able to throw to first right away inning over game preserved dallas noons came in to pitch the ninth and he got the job done a 4-3 final the river hawks are now 18 and 12 7 and 6 in the northeast 10 conference they spend a couple of days now in new york state with games against mercy friday and two against adelphi on saturday then back home sunday they will host stonehill at lalasher park and that's the river hawk report for friday april 9th 2010